The New York City subway is an interline system with different services splitting or merging between tracks. The places where they occur are often known as junctions. Some junctions are fine as they can be resolved by better timing of trains. However, many of these junctions have complicated merging conflicts, making them the major choke point of the system. For the BMT, we have the Cobb. For the IND, we have Queens Plaza and 59th Street. And for the IRT, we have 149th Street and Rogers. For today's video, we will be discussing Rogers Junction, one of the major points of delay for the IRT or A Division. Without further ado, let's begin. In Brooklyn, the 2, 3, 4, and 5 trains run on the Eastern Parkway line. The 2 and 3 trains run local and the 4 and 5 trains run express. After Franklin Avenue, we arrive at Rogers Junction. And that is where the problem begins. From here, the 2 and 5 trains run down the North Shore Avenue line, while the 3 and 4 trains continue to New Lots Avenue and Utica Avenue, respectively. But since the North Shore Avenue line only has direct access with the local track, the 5 has to merge onto the local track with the 2 and 3 before splitting off with the 2 and heading down the North Shore Avenue line. The same happens in the opposite direction where the 5 has to merge onto the local track with the 3 before it crosses over to the express track. This merging conflict causes delays and e into capacity. In Brooklyn, 2, 3, 4, and 5 trains combined are capped at 44 trains per hour. Some 4 and 5 trains start and end service at Bowling Green in Manhattan to increase their capacity further north. To give you a better look at how bad this junction is, I decided to watch trains at Franklin Avenue and ride through Rogers Junction myself. Now that we understand the problem with Rogers Junction, let's discuss the solutions. And there are a few of them, from as simple as adding a few switches to a complete rebuild of the junction. The first option was proposed by Van Schnecken-Ragen 
and it is to send the two and three trains down the North Train Avenue line to Flatbush Avenue Brooklyn College, while the four train takes over the three train route to New Lots Avenue, and the five train will be eliminated. This option can eliminate the merging conflicts by simply adding a pair of switches between the local and express tracks east of Franklin Avenue. However, this option will require the four train, the only service left to run local after Franklin Avenue, which is the part I disagree with Van Schnickenracken, so I made some modifications to his proposal. My plan will still have the two and three trains sent to Flatbush Avenue, but instead of eliminating the five train, it will run with the four on the Eastern Parkway line east of Franklin Avenue. One will run to New Lots Avenue, the other will terminate at Crown Heights, Utica Avenue. One of these services will also have to switch onto the local track to serve the local stops east of Franklin Avenue. I prefer sending the four to New Lots Avenue via the express track and the five train to Crown Heights, Utica Avenue via the local track east of Franklin Avenue. In the future, if the Utica Avenue subway and New Lots line extension to Spring Creek or Gateway Mall gets built, the respective service will be extended there. My plan will also eliminate merging conflicts with the pair of switches, but will keep the express service east of Franklin Avenue. Another popular option, and even being mentioned by the MTA, is introducing a new A-train service. The 8 will be identical to the 2-train until Franklin Avenue. Here, the 2 and 3 will run to Flatbush Avenue, the 4 and 5 will continue east via the express track, while service at local stops east of Franklin Avenue will be taken over by the new 8 train. This option will allow more express service as both the 4 and 5 will be kept on the express track. This makes sense as North Strand Avenue and Kingston Avenue combined serve fewer riders than Crown Heights Utica Avenue. I prefer ending the 4 at New Lots Avenue while ending the 5 and 8 train at Crown Heights Utica Avenue. In the future, if the Utica Avenue subway gets built, I will prefer sending the 5 train down the line as it runs express on the Eastern Parkway line, benefiting those who live further away. However, this plan does have a high cost. Quote, the MTA previously estimated adding the A line would cost 410 million which wouldn't include 224 million worth of new subway cars to run additional service on the line, end quote. So whether adding this service is worth the price should be further examined. The plans we discussed so far are relatively simple, but the last plan we have is much more costly and complex. In 1993, a study was done on fixing the North Strand Avenue Junction, or Rogers Junction as we know it. A total of seven alternatives were proposed, some of which are similar to what we discussed earlier, adding switches. Others involved building flyovers to grade separate the junction or adding new platforms at North Strand Avenue and Kingston Avenue. There were two suggested alternatives to further consider. One is to add a pair of switches after Franklin Avenue. It was estimated to cost $73.6 million or $165 million in today's dollars. The other is a complete grade separation on the junction, estimated to cost $390.3 million or $879 million in today's dollars. In 2009, the MTA took a fresh look at these two suggested alternatives. The estimated cost was $343 million or $522 million today for adding switches and $1.6 billion or $2.4 billion today for grade separation. Given that the price has increased so much, between 1993 and 2009. I argue that the price tag is only going to be higher in 2025. That makes great separation a non-starter. It might not be the craziest price tag I've seen, but it depends on what you are building. The MTA has so many projects to consider. 2.4 billion is more than half of what you need to build Queenslink. So spending that much money on a great separation project isn't worth it in my opinion. Maybe I will consider it in 1993, as it was way cheaper even in today's dollars. Also, the MTA's 2009 study has concluded that adding switches will get you an extra one train per hour compared to grade separation, and the grade separation alternative will be more disruptive to the residents above. With all that being said, I will propose fixing Rogers Junction with a pair of new switches east of Franklin Avenue. With that pair of switches, 
The two and three will run to Flatbush Avenue. The four will run to New Lost Avenue by Express. And the five will switch onto the local track after Franklin Avenue and terminate at Utica Avenue. As for the A train, I would want the MT to study it and find out if it is needed. If it is examined that a new A train is needed, the four and five will both run express, and the A will serve the local stations east of Franklin Avenue before terminating at Utica Avenue. Now I know that people would complain about losing one seat rights, but the time saved by reducing delays would most likely make up for the time you save with that one seat ride. A cross platform transfer between local and express or 7th Avenue and Lexington Avenue service is available at Franklin Avenue. Besides Rogers Junction, some other modifications will be needed. Flatbush Avenue Brooklyn College is not good at turning around trains, limiting capacity on the 2 and 5 trains. We could either extend the North Train Avenue line to build a more efficient terminal or expand the existing Flatbush Avenue station to allow trains to enter the station at higher speeds and to include storage tracks to increase capacity. I prefer the first option, extending the line to King's Highway or a terminal further south. Additionally, the Utica Avenue subway and an extension of the New Lost Line to Gateway Center Mall or Spring Creek should be built. I have videos planned for both of these extensions, so stay tuned. Now, let's see the capacity we get with the inclined Rogers Junction. As mentioned earlier, 2, 3, 4, and 5 trains combined currently run at 44 trains per hour in Brooklyn. The 2009 study estimates the new switches can have 2, 3, 4, and 5 trains handle 57 trains per hour. But with CVTC, that number should be able to be boosted to 60 trains per hour. Two trains now run at around 11 trains per hour, with two of them originating or terminating at New Lost Avenue because of the capacity limit at Flatbush Avenue. With a DNR line Rogers Junction and an extension of the North Street Avenue line or a modified Flatbush Avenue station, two trains can run at around 17 trains per hour, all to Flatbush Avenue. Three trains will remain the same, running at 11 trains per hour in the southbound direction and 8 trains per hour in the northbound direction. Three trains capacity will still be limited because of the adequate junction north of 135th Street, where southbound two trains have to cross over the northbound three train tracks. Fixing that will be a topic for another video. Four trains now run at 13 trains per hour, but one of them starts service at Bowling Green. After fixing Rogers Junction, four trains can run at 15 trains per hour, all to New Lost Avenue. Five trains now also run 13 trains per hour in the southbound direction, with three of them terminating at Bowling Green, 11 trains per hour in the northbound direction, with one of them starting at Bowling Green. After fixing Rogers Junction, all of these trains can be sent to Brooklyn, starting and terminating at Crown Heights Utica Avenue, running at 15 trains per hour. Also, five trains can run to and from Brooklyn at all times, instead of the current rush hour only Brooklyn service. In total, 2, 3, 4, and 5 trains will run 58 trains per hour. Now, this is how many trains these services can run in theory. The actual number could fluctuate because of other bottlenecks in the system, but no doubt that the line in Rogers Junction will increase capacity for the A division. Among the projects the MTA needs, fixing Rogers Junction should be a priority, as it will boost capacity for the A division. As you can see, it doesn't always have to be billion dollar mega projects that are game changers. Adding a new pair of switches can do wonders. What are your thoughts on the interline Rogers Junction? Share with me in the comments below. While the interline Rogers will do wonders for the A division, the F and M swap is crucial for the IND Queens Blower line. You can learn about it in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in that video.